Well, uh, thank you all for coming. Uh, I'd like to begin with a, a quote from uh, Nisargadatta, uh, his book, uh, I Am That, which is amazing. He's probably the foremost uh, non-duality teacher on the planet, although now I understand he's on the other side. So, um, this is uh, a very nice quote. <clears throat> which sort of sums up his teaching and what we have to do, okay? Quote, The main point to grasp is that you have projected onto your pure self a world of your own imagination based on memories, desires, and fears and you have imprisoned yourself in it. Break the spell and be free." End quote. Okay, um, my job description is I'm a teacher, preacher of the end of history and kingdom come now. History ended because absolute knowledge was discovered uh, by Hegel, Schelling, and the A-Team. Absolute knowledge is non-duality in scientific form, uh, in a form which everyone can understand and we believe will be taught in all the schools in the world. Uh, and which will lift our whole planet, educate our whole planet, into the one reality and the one consciousness. Now, my talk tonight is based on my book, uh, The Jedi Handbook of Global Education. And, of course, I have some available uh, those who would like a copy at cost, uh, it's ten dollars or something. So, um, yeah, this book um, is based on 35 years of uh, research and meditation and um, shows how non-duality can heal the planet and solve all of its problems and also show how we can uh, self-actualize, uh, God realize, that is become Jedi. That's our word for who we really are, our true self. So, um, in my talk uh, has uh, two parts which I name the space and the point. And um, I'm going to open up the uh, conversation for discussion afterwards. And um, there are essentially 200 topics in my book, and I'm not sure which ones you'd like to uh, focus on, so I'm going to uh, summarize them in nine heads, which is in my book, in the beginning of the book. So, uh, this is what the book essentially uh, contains. Quote, the Jedi Handbook will reveal that human history is over, how it happened, and what it means. One second. Don't have my bifocals that Plato, Hegel, and the Jedi philosopher-scientists on our planet have discovered the truth. The, non, the knowledge of the force of non-duality, what we call Jedi absolute science, that reveals what and why the universe is and who we really are. 
that global Jedi education into non-duality alone can heal our planet and permanently eliminate war, terrorism, greed, poverty, inequality, ignorance, nihilism, disease, and death. that the real cause of the world's problems is the immersion of the main institutions of society science, religion, education, politics, etc. in the dark side of the force. Force is our word for the one reality which makes healing impossible. That what currently passes for science is really only a subset of holistic, non-dual Jedi science. That its dark worldview and main assumptions are responsible for the nihilism, depression, and youth alienation that pervades our society and schools. That today's mainstream religions are incapable of healing us due to their erroneous ideas about God and man and how this can be corrected. Why current education on our planet is in fact miseducation and why the introduction of Jedi schools and Jedi non-dual education is the fastest way to save our schools and release the full potential of our children. Why our medical doctors and psychiatrists cannot heal us and what can. What true healing and health is and the true cause and cure of all diseases, above all the disease called man. Theogamy and the coming revolution in relationships and the solution to sex. Finally, why the New Age movement and its I am God teaching is in need of major correction if it is to realize its true ideals. Okay, so um, I'll begin first with uh, the space, okay? And uh, I'd like to give you something that will help you in your daily spiritual practice and be of, of value for you. So that's how I arrange these uh, two talks. So um, I'm a child of the 60s, okay, and 70s, which is uh, telling. And uh, during that period, I've had uh, several uh, amazing experiences, but there's one that stands out uh, above them all. And that's the one I'm going to share. Uh, some of you have heard this before, so I'm giving you a different aspect to the experience to make it fresh. Okay, this uh, happened in my Queens College days. Excuse me a second. This is a little problem, isn't it? In my Queen's College days, I was a hippie, etc., etc. Um, anyway, uh, someone told me about this book. Uh, I never heard of Hegel, uh, the Phenomenology of Spirit, and my friend said, "You got to read this." Uh, the last chapter is called "Absolute Knowledge." I said, "That's what I want." So I very quickly gave up everything in my life. You know, relationships, sex, uh, pleasures, money. Art. I just wanted to know what Hegel knew, what absolute knowledge was. So I began to focus only on this book. And um, I was taking a course at the time at uh, Darrell Taylor's house in Flushing. Eight of us were reading this book. Uh, every Tuesday night we got together. Anyway, one day I uh, was home at night and I was reading this. Uh, I mainly focused on the last chapter. I didn't bother to read the uh, preceding 700 pages. I wanted to know what absolute knowledge was. <laughs> so um, 
yeah, eventually I, I went into this deep meditation and uh, I broke through into this thing and I couldn't handle it. It was overwhelming. Um, I feel I died and um, uh, for three months I was out of my body and uh, I wasn't sleeping at all or eating and all these incredible things uh, uh, I began to experience. Um, uh, I'm just going to give you a short version of this. Um, well, I saw uh, five uh, Western Eastern teachers, um, Hegel and Shelley, the night this happened, they came into my room, Hegel put his arm around me, and then over the next few days and weeks, um, this uh, teacher Babaji, he hangs out in the Himalayas, he came into my room, and uh, Meher Baba, and uh, lastly Jesus Christ. Uh, this is a little sound, unbelievable, but I saw him in the flesh. You know, he put his hands on my face, all this stuff. I was gone. I was out of the world. I didn't think I could ever get back into the body and everything. That's another story. So I'm just going to share uh, this aspect, uh, this part of the experience with you. Um, yeah, uh, the second day, I... Um, I went downstairs uh, to the living room. My parents went to work. I was all alone in the house, and uh, I was in this this one consciousness. I don't know what to call it. Time stopped. Uh, there was no time. The world was gone. I was just in this this unitary state, and uh, it's hard to communicate this. It was incredible. What can I say? So I went downstairs and my piano was in the living room and I put my finger on, I don't know, could have been an E note, boom, and all of a sudden uh, 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 a rushing stream of, of uh, music came out of that one note. And uh, all the music that was ever written uh, in, hu in human history just gushed forth and went all over the room. Uh, you know, ancient uh, songs, music, uh, Greek, Aeolian, chance and uh, it was incredible what can I say so um, and this is even more incredible um, and what, what, what I, the reason why I'm saying this is because uh, I want you to try to get outside the box and realize you know how incredible uh, the present moment is the here and now and how rich and deep it is there's, there's so much that's right here and now but we don't see it because we're we're on the surface flitting here and there about our concerns, practical needs. And so uh, for the first time I came into the, the depth of the now, the power of now, the depth of the now. And um, I just want you to, to, to see this and realize this. As Hegel says, um, the present contains everything that ever happened in the past. Okay, so um, I uh, went over to the Venetian blinds and um, I began to see these like droplets on each of the uh, horizontal slats and then I touched one and uh, a, a movie came out of it. It's like each, each uh, bead or drop was uh, a soul, someone who lived in the past. It was like all the souls of all the people who ever lived were in the room and on this Venetian blind and, and like it was like a, a, a reel of film. You know, you could touch one and all of a sudden you could see all the you know, life experiences of this particular soul to live in, lived in 300 BC or something. It was all there. And uh, well, later on, I, I learned it was called the Akashic Records. And uh, I, used, I called it, uh, in honor of Jung, uh, the Library of the Collective Unconscious. And um, yeah, as, uh, let's see, Mayor Baba says in one of his books, Discourses, um, uh, everything is uh, preserved on the, I love this, the cinematic film of the mind. The cinematic film of the mind. I mean, you have no idea what's here. You know, everything and everyone is here, whoever lived. You know? What's called the astral planes, where you go when you die, are right here and now. Uh, so, uh, yeah, that'll lead us to the next, that connects to the next part of this talk, which is the point, okay, and that everyone exists in the same one. Point, which is incredible. Um, yeah, so um, let's stop here. And that was, you know, it was, you know, this is the beginning of three months, you know, so, you know, I was on the other side, I saw what was going on. 
Well, I, I guess I became what Mayor Baba calls a must. I don't know if you heard that word, M-A-S-T, God intoxicated. You're totally oblivious to, to the sense world, what's going on, and you're focused on, you know, uh, all the planes of consciousness and everything. So that was, was incredible. Okay, um, second part of the talk. I'm going to try to keep this uh, short because I'd like to have interactive, uh, an interactive talk and a discussion, you know, in a remaining time. Um, so, um, yeah, in this part of the talk, uh, I welcome uh, questions. You can interrupt me because I'd like to start the conversation going. So stop me at any time. And this, what I'm about to say, uh, relates to uh, what you got in the email, uh, which uh, was as follows, uh, the exhortation that we must dedicate our lives to healing the whole planet, and not just ourselves. That is seven billion people. Okay. That's the key. And I don't think many people are doing this, so this is so essential. So this part of the talk is called The Point, okay? And um, it's all uh, summed up. Uh, this is a symbol for The Point. It was, uh, it's the mandala, okay? Uh, and the, uh, the simplified uh, version of the mandala is this. Uh, the circle with the point in the middle. Okay. So uh, try to uh, look at this and focus on it and uh, assimilate it. Okay. So uh, the circle represents the whole of reality, uh, the whole planet. All seven billion souls are within this circle. Okay. And the key thing is the point in the center. Uh, represents consciousness, or as some like to call it, awareness. And uh, this is true reality, this, this one consciousness or one awareness. Okay? And uh, the point symbolizes that because the point is invisible. It has no extension, length, height, and width. Just like consciousness. Okay? And uh, the key is this, that um, all of us, every person, every self, inhabits this one indivisible point okay, of consciousness. And uh, that's the basis, the way we can heal the whole planet. You can heal it uh, every day uh, of, your, of your life. Um, there's so many methods connected with this, I'll just give two or three quick ones. So what you can do is wake up every morning and immediately uh, put yourself inside the circle, inside the mandala, okay? Uh, don't think of the, basal, the mandala as outside you, but just merge with it. So you're in this circle, okay? And you're, you're one with every person on the planet, okay? Because consciousness ult ultimately is one, and everybody exists in the same one consciousness or this point. So you stay in this uh, all throughout your day. Uh, you try to recall it to mind that you're in this circle and you're connected to uh, every body on the planet. And uh, that's the beginning. And uh, the key is your, your thoughts. Uh, I had an ex experience when I went to India uh, the first night in a hotel in Bombay. In the evening, I was sleeping, Mayor Baba came in to my dream or something, and he said these words, uh, we are learning control. Okay. Okay, so that's, that's what it's all about. We have to control our thoughts, our thinking process, because our thoughts are powerful. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, know, you think of a friend in California, if you just think of that friend, your thought immediately connects to that person. And uh, for good or ill, you know, if the people that you don't like, if they don't like you, you think negative thoughts, that goes right to them and it does damage or healing or the opposite. So, uh, can I use the example? Yeah. Um, for example, when I told this to E, this, 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 this principle, this truth, um, she said a family member was having a difficult time, he was uh, out of work, etc. 
So I told her, whenever you think of him, the thought will go right to him and will change him and affect him. And uh, <coughs> I think two days later, she called me and said, uh, he just got a job. You know, it turned his life around. So that's just an example. But, you know, everybody knows this, I think. You know, healing at a distance, etc. So that, that's the key thought you have to understand. In this single point, we're all in it together, okay? So we have to control our thoughts. And, you know, during the day, whenever something comes, pops up in your mind, uh, a person, a relationship, or what's going on in Syria, for example, around the world, all these horrible things that are taking place, you know, the airline was down last week, 224 people were killed, and uh, all of this stuff. You can actually, you're connected to all the people who died on the plane who were not really dead, as we all know. And um, you can actually influence and change what's happening in Syria. You can change the whole consciousness. I, I visualize Syria as healed. All the people are getting reconciled. Uh, Bashar Assad is having a change of heart right now. He's being affected by one of his teachers or uh, teachers within his religion, etc. And it's incredible what we can do if we just focus not on ourselves only but on the whole planet. And uh, this extends to the astral plane, the astral world. You may have a parent or loved one who, who died. Uh, you never told the parent, I love you. You can do that right now. You can just Close your eyes and, I love you, I love you. And it goes right to them, okay? And you can change the, their consciousness that they're in, their feeling, and what they're going through, you know? And they're, you know, uh, they're uh, going to all these teachers, heaven and hell states, depending on your life, what you go through, you know, there's a life review when you die and all this stuff. So you can really affect these people and change whatever they're going through for the better. Um, yeah, that that's pretty much sums it up. And then another thing uh, I advise you can do is um, uh, bring into your consciousness eternity, or the eternal present or now, which alone exists. And you could do something like um, stop action animation. In other words, I do this a lot, um, and it's incredible what it does. Like you're in the kitchen and you want a, a drink of orange juice, you open the uh, the door, you reach for the orange juice, you should hold it, right? And instead of just doing, you know, coming out and pouring it, you stop for about three or five seconds right in the middle, you know? And you remind yourself, I'm in the eternal now, right? Mm -hmm. And then you complete the action. Mm -hmm. You do this all through the day, and eventually you, you come to feel and experience the present, the eternal present or now, or eternity, and it's amazing, it's life-changing. Uh, so, no one has a question? I was hoping you'd interrupt, but... All right, now let's throw it open, and we can talk about what I just talked about, or one of the nine topics of the book. So, If you have nothing to say, I'll just continue talking. <laughs> I have what did your parents say when you were going through this three months of... Are you kidding? They freaked out. <laughs> they, uh, they lost my sister. Uh, um, in uh, just a few months earlier, and this was with three children, and then I was going. So, uh, yeah, she, uh, the previous year, uh, became a disciple of Mayor Baba. She went to India after he, he dropped his body and everything, and she came back into Big Sur. Uh, living in Venice, California, went on a trip to Big Sur. On the way back, the camper overturned and burst into flames, and her and a few people were burnt, uh, you know, died in flame. So my parents were freaking out because I was I left the planet and they didn't know what to do. So it was it was really rough on them. Yeah. And how did you, um, you know, how, how did you do the functional parts of living? If you were right, well, you know, um, I uh, I don't want to. Well, how much time do we have? <laughs> um, Basically. Yeah, yeah. Let me see. Um, functional living. Um, yeah, well, let's see, the second day my mother walked into the room and I went to the window and uh, there were like two stages. I, uh, you know, saw God face to face, you know, <clears throat> the Bible teaches. I pulled off God's veil and I started crying. I said, oh no, you know, you're in the presence of infinite goodness, you know, compared to what you are. And then, um, and then that lasts for a while, and then you merge. You merge with God or 
you know, the one being. And then my mother was in, in the doorway, and um, I, I said, uh, whatever happens, remember Schelling and Hegel. You know, because they came into the room the night before, and that was my way back. I never thought I'd get back into reality, so, and she says, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? So, uh, anyway, this was the beginning of three months, and uh, eventually I, quote, came down through different ways. Uh, we can discuss this at another time. It gets very involved, but uh, it was rough. I had to, you know, a lot of suffering and pain. It took me a year and a half to get back to semi-normal consciousness. So. Did your sister's death, I mean, was that kind of a portal for you as well? A portal? You, yeah. A kind of... I mean, you talk about, and because you brought it up, so I'm assuming it's comfortable for you. Sure, sure. But uh, it was devastating for your parents. But for you, shortly after her death, you experienced this amazing... Uh, well, yeah, this was in April 1970, actually. She passed in uh, uh, October 1969. Right. Mm -hmm. so, so, shortly. Yeah. Uh, well, I don't know if you're interested in this, but, you know, this was the 60s, so I was into the gurus and yeah. all the powers, so I, uh, I was convinced I could, you know, we all went on the plane, you know, to the, uh, it, uh, what is it called, the mortuary, the, uh, wherever the body was, and I was going to resurrect it, bring it back mm. to life, I knew the power was there, and, uh, so we went into the, uh, the room, and uh, the person said, uh, in charge, uh, she's burnt beyond recognition. So I, I, said, I said, well, if I bring her back, and she's, you know, in this horrible, scarred body. So I said, I'd better not. So, I, but, um, so yeah, it affected me profoundly. I was sad that I, you know, and I, I feel a little guilty, because I was the one who, who pretty much got her into Mayor Bamba. I don't know if you want to hear this. Um, I was in Cooper Union at the time, studying architecture, and uh, in, in the English literature course we were reading William Barrett's Irrational Man. Nothing to do with Woody Allen's movie. <laughs> the Irrational Man, and it said there's no God, there's no right or wrong, there's no afterlife, death is the end. Uh, Charles Roland to the Dark Tower came, that he focused on that poem by uh, Browning. And um, I, I got very depressed, you know, what's the point of living, you know, everybody who ever lived is dead, all our children will be dead, six feet under, worm food. So I got really, you know, why get up in the morning, why do anything? So, and then I told my sister, like, uh, a week later that uh, there's no point to life, if there's no God, no afterlife, no meaning to anything, and she, she freaked out. And then her friend said, oh, oh Beth Arditi was into... Um, Mary Baba, so she wanted some kind of meeting and hope, so she went down to the meeting, the, the Baba meetings in uh, Barrow Street in the village, I think it was, and so she got involved in that group, and it was, I think, because of me, and I told mm -hmm. her, there's no point to living if there's no God, no eternal life or anything. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I don't know if I answered your question. Well, I guess, you know, it sounds like, I don't know, we, we debate a lot in here, if suffering brings us to this uh, place, uh, right. And, well, I knew and, she was alive. She yeah. was okay. And yeah, you knew that. Yeah, I, just I mean, did knew the experience it. bring you? Uh, well, did oh. suffering bring you oh. closer to, you know, your, the experience that you had over those three months? Right. Did suffering, or Evie always says it's love that brings us there. You know. Love. Um, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Well, the energy level of the of the world, you know, in New York City, or. You know, at the time, the Beatles ascended the throne of the world, you know, about the Beatles, right? I mean, it was incredible. We thought they were yeah. gods from another planet, you know? Right. And, you it know, was a great time. We used to, <laughs> uh, you know, the back of uh, Sergeant Peppers, you know, we used to look for clues. Uh, yes, we heard all these stories I that yeah. if you well, figure out when I'm 64, if you figure out there's a phone yeah. number, if you call it up, you get a ticket to Leso. They just bought an island in the Aegean Sea, and there's a party going on. <laughs> and all this stuff was going on. Doing the and record backwards. Right, right. Very right. right. cool. Oh. It was amazing. Very I mean, times were incredible, you know. So, um, yeah, so the energy was so high. You know, the gurus were all over the place. Yeah. You know, uh, Satchitananda, Guru Maharaji, Mayor Baba, Babaji. I wrote who's reading, what, Autobiography of a Yogi. 
number one bestseller on the spiritual you know, mm -hmm. bestseller list, and uh, and uh, I can go on and on. I used to go to Savitria in Baltimore. That was a spiritual center, and um, everybody was like, you know, into this thing. Like it was incredible. It was like, uh, you know. The heaven on earth was about to happen and we were going to do it, you know. So there was no suffering or, or pain. It was just like, I got to know. And somebody slipped me this book and I said, well, you must have gotten it. Because uh, 800 pages, the last chapter is called Absolute Knowledge. And I said, wow. And then, um, and then I, I believe he did and I am convinced he did. Did and you ever read the first 700 pages? Yes, many times. <laughs> uh, I read the book at least 10, 15 times and underlined that I have a whole stack of underlined books. Ken, yes. uh, why, can you elaborate on the uh, stop action thing with the orange juice? Yeah, yeah. Uh, talk a little more about that. Right. Um, yeah, well, that's, that's the key. All the teachers say, what's holding us back is our habits. Habits conditioned... Uh, behavior patterns, doing the same thing every day, and um, so if we could break them, interrupt them, we could, you know, create an opening and let the uh, the eternal now seep in and, and start to expand. Um, you, we all know, I think, what's what's going mm -hmm. on. I'm starting to feel it now. It's mm -hmm. amazing. Um, you see, like, the, 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 what's destroying us is the second hand of, of our watches, because it seems the present moment is gone, and, and that's what's killing us. You know, everybody's stuck in time. Mm -hmm. You know, so those report... Uh, turn the time back just a little while ago, didn't we? <laughs> yeah, that's true, yeah. There's a documentary about children growing up, and everything was wonderful until time came on the scene, and it destroyed childhood. Because the children live in the present, you know. They don't know about, uh, you'll get your pony next yeah. year. Next year? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> so, um, um, wait a minute, who asked the question? Oh. Yeah. oh, yeah, about the stop action, yeah. Yeah, I've been doing this a lot for the, for the last two years. And to, yeah, to break out of this uh, habitual action, and, you know, a day is program, we get up, we go down, we brush our teeth, take a show, and... And we run out of the house, and and we, we put us place ourselves in time. We place ourselves in time, and uh, which cuts us off from reality or the <coughs> eternal present. And the stop action uh, method or activity helps us to break out of that. So, you know, whatever you're doing, you know, um, if you can slow down, that's a good way to put it. Slow down especially for, for New Yorkers, we talk a mile a minute. And I had a friend, a student, or Max, his name is a few days ago, we met with my other teacher, Boiragi, he's a meditation teacher, and he was talking a mile a minute, and he said, stop. Say the same thing you said, but very slowly. And eventually he did it, and it changed his life. Said, wow. And so, that's, there's all these different things you could do. Just start, if you speak fast, start speaking more slowly. Um, I think that's the Alexander method. You do things different. You know, instead of going home this way, you take a different route, walk around, and, and that's that really. But of course, you have to also, you know, meditate and focus on your unity with everyone and reality, or what's called God. You know, um, and that's what's happening in, okay. in, in science today. That we're coming up with a new understanding of God, which is consciousness or awareness. So yes, I think there's a difference in what you're saying. It's like, you know, you can be mindful during the day, but that's almost like slowing down your habitual patterns. Okay. Oh. But when you stop, like you said, oh. it's like really interrupting them. And, you know, it's like seeing yourself suspended there in animation. Mm. Okay, I like that. Yeah, so I would say yes. Yeah. Um, so again, you can it's do like this. A more, more when, abrupt break. when you're reaching for the orange juice, right, instead of three seconds, just pick it up. And then the refrigerator, of course, the door is open, so you're losing uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's the duration, and uh, the bill goes up. You have to forget that. So you just hold it and you wait. You, know? you wait for about a minute, a minute, two minutes. Yeah, that's great. I feel it. Yeah, and, <laughs> and there it is. Uh, you know, I, there's no time. I'm just right here. I can stay here forever. Yeah. One of the tricks is you have to be able to, uh, ex you know, be in this moment forever. Yeah. 
you know, you have to literally, it is forever. I have to, I can stay, I know I'm able to stay in this position, in this space forever. And eventually, you know, time stops and, you know, the, the present it comes in. See, you know, and you, um, yeah, you begin to say, you know, the aha experience, you begin to, uh, oh my God, well, yeah, what, what, you know, you say, wow, this wood, that's incredible. I never, I never noticed this before. Uh, yellow is incredible. Now I'm thinking of, of course, uh, the doors of perception, all this hard stuff, you know, and all that stuff. And I never noticed that before. You know, the unfamiliar, or no, no the, the familiar becomes unfamiliar, you know, and new. And, and that, that's a beginning, or that's getting into the door, you know. And, um, what does he say, Blake, William Blake, you know, when the yes. doors of perception are cleansed, then we enter, what, the morning of creation or something like that. You know, Ken, you, what it reminds me of is you know how you always see, uh, occasionally you see these guys in these street performers? Right. Yeah, the mind. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah right. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Central Park. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And, I, and so, you know, you would, I would look at them and see them as like frozen in time, but after hearing you, it's like they suddenly take on a, a, a dimension of lifefulness. Mm -hmm. You know, they're, uh, they're, not stuck, yeah, yeah. they're not stuck in time. They're, um, That's interesting. Yeah, I yeah, see they're, that. They're, uh, in a, they're out of time. Yeah. They're out of time. Yeah. They're yeah. not stuck That's in time. That's interesting. They're illuminating uh, the timelessness, so to speak. Mm. The timeless now, like you said. Yes, yes. So, um, that's beautiful. Wow. Yeah, so we know what we have to do. So yeah. uh, let's get to work. Um, let me just, um, yeah, so what I'm saying in regard to non-duality, which is the absolute truth, I mean, let me say it three times, um, reality is absolutely one. Reality is absolutely one. <coughs> That's enough of that. But um, I just had a flash with uh, the second day I was sitting on the living room couch at this experience and my sister-in-law walked in, I was sitting like this, just like this, <laughs> and uh, she came in and said, one, one what? <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't have to say, I just stood like this, and I had a smile on my face. <laughs> you know, you're one with the one, you can do it that way, Plato talks like that also, genius. So, uh, if nothing else, if you, if you come away with nothing else from tonight, just Go home and do this. Sit in a different couch and do this. It'll, it's incredible. What I don't know what the finger does, but uh, this finger. Foot. And uh, yeah, so that was incredible. Um, so let me. Um, I have a question about the circle and the point. Hold that question one sec. Um, yeah. So what I'm doing? What's different from uh, what's his name again? Wait. This in the country. This this sort of and the uh, the non dualist is that I'm providing. Uh, scientific uh, support to the teaching and I have here all these scientists and philosophers say the exact same thing reality is one and uh, so I want to pass this around so it's being confirmed right now all the cutting-edge scientists are really the, realizing this uh, Bernard Hayes and uh, uh, Fred Allen Wolf and uh, Schrodinger who, who mm -hmm. founded quantum physics Einstein is in this so, you know, have faith and confidence that it's it's true. That's mm -hmm. the key thing. Unless you believe it or know it, it's true. It's nothing's going to happen. Because you're going you're to hear the other side, the talk from the people who don't know this, and they'll just punch you a balloon and you'll be back in what Plato calls the cave. And mm -hmm. it's really hopeless and miserable. Most people are living like that. And there's this, you know, you have to be diligent and really dig your heels in and stay on the one, the, the, the non-duality concept because... You turn on the news, you talk to your neighbors, they're totally in, in the cave. They, they don't know anything. They're in multiplicity and separateness, so separation, which doesn't exist. That's the key. There is no such thing as separation. The senses, okay, our five senses seem to tell us that we're all separate from each other and everything is separate from everything else. This is Neil Donald Walsh. I got this from this movie, uh, Three Magic Words. It's incredible what he says. Uh, let's see if I can remember it. We have to get rid of the uh, rid ourselves of the idea of separation, uh, separation theology. Okay? I'm here and God is over there. Separation, separation cosmology. 
The table is here, and this thing is over there. All things are separate. That's what people see with the senses. And then separation sociology, okay? Mm -hmm. Again, I'm over here, you're there, us and them, Russia, the U.S., and all. Okay, all of this leads to separation pathology, mm. the way the world is right now. But the amazing thing is, there is no such thing as separation. In reality, there's a, we're all one. There's only one reality, you know? So I'll pass these around, you know, you could, Eve, pass them around. So you had a question to Eve. Okay, so how would you draw a mandala which is a complex, elaborate version of that circle that you showed us with the point in the middle? Yes. How would you draw separation if you were going to make a flag that was not that, that was not truth? Well, you could begin, well, that's a good question. Uh, my first thought was, you, instead of one, you have two, one here and one here. Okay. You know, dots or three, okay. one, two, three, or five. You know, that's one way of doing it. In my classes, what I do, is I, uh, I have Plato's divided line, but there's two realms of, of reality. The whole breaks down into uh, the visible and the invisible. Mm -hmm. Okay, matter, material world, and consciousness, which is invisible in one. And um, yeah, so we represent, well, we teach the truth is the unity of opposites. That's, you know, it began in a thousand years ago in uh, China, I guess. The yin yang is, is the most familiar way of expressing it. And um, so, uh, very, I'm not going to go into detail, but it's in the book, it's in the book. By the way, the book is there and it's mm -hmm. cost, uh, it, it's, it's, I'm giving it for cost, $10 or something, if you're interested. Um, so, um, yeah, the unity of opposites, um, mm -hmm. for example, uh, there's the inner and the outer, okay, and consciousness and matter, and the two are one. You can't have one without the other. Okay, we call that polarity, like North Pole, South Pole. Can't have one without the other. So the two sides of reality are an absolute unity. Okay? And in this unity, consciousness trumps matter. Okay? Such that matter is reality, and it's infinite, and it's all reality. Because a consciousness knows that it is, uh, matter is not. Okay, in one word. So, uh, you know. You, you, you're the most important thing in the universe. Matter is nothing. Okay? So uh, what we do is we have the divided line. So we have the plus minus unity on top. That's the truth. And at the bottom, we have the separation of plus and minus. So you have a parenthesis and you have plus and then a line and then minus. That's how we do it in my classes. Separateness of the two, which are never separate. They're one. You can't have one without the other. And of course, man, woman. You know, male, female. Is, this runs through the whole universe, from the subatomic to the grip, to the largest level of reality. The unity of opposites is the principle for understanding everything these teachers say. So uh, that's what I would do. It's like yeah, it's like separation, okay, uh, whatever the opposites are, and then unity. Mm -hmm. so separation is an illusion. It's a lie, deception. Everybody's born into it. And you have to gradually realize that these two are really one and inseparable. For example, ourselves and God, you know, mm -hmm. and heaven and earth, and the, the sacred and the secular, the eternal and the temporal. These two are one eternally, you know. And echad, may they be echad uh, as we are, you know, John 17 in the scriptures. Um, and that re uh, reminds me of the Bhagavad Gita. All these teachings are incredible. Uh, Chapter 610, um, what does he say? I don't know who wrote it. Anybody ever wrote the Bible like you? No. Um, it says, um, uh, to achieve union or oneness, right, uh, you must constantly practice one-pointedness. That's what last week I said, no, you have to be committed and dead serious if you want to get involved with this. Well, we need these realized beings in the world. The world's going to stay the way it is unless, what Marianne Williamson says, we reach critical mass. Enough people realize their, you know, divine Jedi self, you know, enlightened self, uh, whatever you want to call it. And then after critical mass, we, um, so what do you say? Mass. we have the chain reaction. So the whole planet bursts into flame. You know, Teilhard de Chardin, he calls it the omega point. We're moving towards this point. 
you make a point, okay, in which the new sphere is realized. We all become one consciousness, the whole planet. And the world bursts into flames of love, divine love. And that's what we're moving towards. And that'll end all the horror shows that's going on in the world today. But you, it's not going to happen unless you commit 24-7 and become one-pointed, as the Bhagavad Gita says. And it's all the teachers say that it's Jesus, if, if I, I be single, echad, all of you will be full of light, not darkness, the cave of light. So, um, you know, Baba Ramdas, Ramdas's guru, uh, uh, Neem Karoli Baba, he was asked in India, how do you become enlightened, teacher? And it's the same thing. Um, bring your mind to a point and wait for grace. So they all, you know, have this, it's right there. But again, you have to constantly practice 24-7. You wake up in the morning, one point in this. You know, use whatever word or mantra or saying or truth you have, which is meditate in stillness. But it, unless you con yeah, continue in my word, Jesus says, you will know the truth and be free. That's what Narga, Nar, Nisigadartha. Nisigadartha said, yeah be free. So you got to transcend the lower false self, which is polluted because of all these distractions, mm -hmm. multiplicity, separation, and he said that, she said that, they did that, oh my rent, I got... Mm -hmm. it, it's all crazy because of what's going on on the horizontal plane, and you have to totally, you know, put all things under your feet, you know, and live more and more in the internal present, open up to it. You know, your heart center has to open in your consciousness and do whatever it takes, you know, uh, but control your thoughts. Control, yeah, that's so important. I'm realizing that, that uh, if this is true, that consciousness is one and indivisible, then we all inhabit the same consciousness and our thoughts are in the center. So I really believe, I'm starting to believe now that um, well, this, this is modern physics. It's called the Gaia hypothesis. You ever heard that? Anyone? Yeah. It's like the world, the planet Earth is like a living organism. With me? A living organism. And this is the Chardin also, uh, uh, Gaia is Earth. We are the mind of the Earth, okay? It's, it's um, um, yeah, the Chardin, the newest sphere. We are the mind of the Earth. And, and um, it's like an individual thought, individual's thoughts, okay? They affect his, his body, his health, his, his experience of others in the world. Just so, the earth, we are, uh, as we think, as, as a collective thinks, all the people on the planet, uh, it affects uh, the, the um, geography, the, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, you know, the... Uh, Biosphere? Environment. Environment. Geology. Uh, geology, thank you. The, the whole planet. And it, it results in tsunamis, uh, tornadoes all over the place, and all these natural disasters because uh, the collective thoughts of the whole planet, you with me? Um, they, they, we are the mind of the earth, so if we're thinking these horrible negative thoughts, you know, the, 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 uh, the earth, the rocks, the, the, the mantle, the layers and everything start to shake and tremble, the tectonic plate shift. So it's so important to get this out there, and I'm, I'm doing it with my, with my students in St. John, and we all should do this. I really, I think it. I, I, I like to say I know, but you know, I'm convinced this is true. That we have to clean up our act on the on the thought level, and start thinking right, um, correct. You know, Mayor Baba, we are learning control, and that's going to shift everything and bring in what all the prophets of the ages have spoken of. You know, this incredible world. Uh, um, you know, heaven on earth. Um, in Judaism, it's Olam Haba, the world to come. In Islam, it's the just society, uh, Elysium. And it's there, waiting to be, you know, everyone says M. Scott Peck, a world waiting to be born. He was a really good, a very helpful teacher of mine. And it's there, well, this is the truth. It is right now. The unity is a low reality. It was there zillions of years ago. It's there now and there forever. As um, Fichte says, he passed him now. Victor says, uh, the absolute I, okay, the one consciousness or awareness, is all that ever was, is, and will be. There's nothing but the one. 
And so, you know, reality is infinitely perfect right now. But if you're not aware of it, you have what we have today in the world, the Michigas, the mess. Mm -hmm. So we all have to double down and really, you know, uh, make our eyes single, our consciousness, our mind, and, and thereby transform and heal ourselves and, and our circle, those around us. If we get healed and those we're in touch with get healed also, we give them the space to open up and change. I love that you and Paul inadvertently delivered a kind of Super Bowl level commercial for yoga when you were examining the orange juice practice because um. being a yoga teacher, um, which gave me a life other than the me, me, me life, it stops your automatic knee jerky momentum. Right. When you do that stop action thing. And when you were reaching in diagrammatically for the orange juice, it was like warrior tool. <laughs> and, and you also said, you actually used the words that I was thinking. You said, we have to get this under our feet. We mm. have to kind of get more vertical. Yeah, just and that's down. yoga. Come, mm. You come in for a landing, like this helicopter of thoughts, mm. propeller, just goes and you get vertical, mm. and it's a gift. Mm. So I love the orange juice part. Oh, well, well, thank you. <laughs> I'm glad I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Mary and I do yoga together. <laughs> oh. I have a question about the opposites. Yes. Because, you know, I mean, we live in such a world of like light and dark and cold and when you say that they are one, do you mean that like one depends on the other? Like if we didn't have the concept light, we couldn't have dark, we couldn't right. have, we can't have one without the other? Is it along those lines? Something like that. But um, in my most brilliant students ask that question. It, 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 it's, it's different. Uh, it's, it doesn't, it's not a universal. <clears throat> I don't want to go. This will take us too far uh, away. But. Um, um, let me see, uh, hmm, wow, there's a lot here. Uh, St. Augustine and Fichte and a few other teachers say that there's no such thing okay, as darkness. Darkness is just a very little amount of light. So light is what truly is, and darkness is just the absence of light. It's called privation. So St. Augustine says that, um, Evil doesn't exist. Uh, goodness or the good is reality, and uh, a very little amount of good is, is evil. So evil has no true being. It's a privation of, of good. So this sort of contradicts the principle of the unity of, uh, unity of opposites, which is best exemplified um, as Schelling says. Schelling says the secrets of the whole universe are contained in the bar magnet. You know. So you have the two sides, uh, positive, negative, North Pole, South Pole, and uh, they, they're exact opposites. And in the center you have what they call the indifference point, neither North or South or whatever. And this is the unity of the opposites. So here you have a per perfect example of the opposites and their unity. But with, with uh, hot and cold and light and dark, it becomes different. Um, well, I don't know if you know Eckhart Tolle says, um, life has no opposite. Do you know that one? Yeah. The opposite of life is not death. Um, uh, the opposite of death is birth. See, those are the opposites. So life has no opposite, which I like, so there's nothing mm -hmm. but life, you know. And like the one reality has no opposite, or what we call the force, you know, using the Jedi language, which we use to uh, reach the largest audience and to make it more interesting, this teaching, and easier, easier to grasp. That's what we put in Star Wars language. Um, but, um, yeah, so in Jedi, Star Wars language, we have the one reality, the force, and it has two sides, the light side and the dark side. You know, and these are opposites. Um, so, um, yeah, and then there's the unity and the light side trumps the, oh, it trumps the dark side, that's important. Um, hang on a second, I was getting to something. Well, the, of course, the big one everybody's interested in, I think, is uh, uh, the problem of sex and its solution. Um, well, sex means two things. It means gender, 
you know, male, female, and it also means intimacy, you know, physical, you know, lovemaking, intimacy. And so, uh, should we get into that? I don't know. But, um... Why is it a problem? Why is it? Are you kidding? Look at relationships. I think the, you know, the divorce rate is over 60% right now. Well, you know, uh, marriages and a divorce. But, um, why is it a problem? Yeah. Um... Well, uh, yeah, it's a problem if you don't know about the one, you know, the one reality. Uh, let's see, should we get into this? And also, it's not, I mean, to be politically correct now, it's not just male female anymore. Oh, the I mean, LG, uh, So G many G subtypes. Right. Uh, which, you know, in some ways is interesting. Yeah, I have trained at gender yeah. students in my class. Yeah. We discussed this stuff. And the, the quick answer is that it doesn't matter what you are, you have to go back to the, what we call the androgynous state, which is beyond male and female. So we teach that um, uh, your primary identity is, uh, is uh, androgen, Jedi androgen, um, which is confirmed in the Bible, Galatians 3, there is neither male nor female anymore in the spirit. You know? But your secondary identity is man or woman. So that's the first thing we have to do, because, well, uh, very quickly, it's in one of the handouts, I think. Oh no, hang on a second. Um, do I have that here? here it is. Uh, sex, uh, the coming revolution in relationships. Uh, so you are not a man. Right. You are not a woman. You are a Jedi androgen. That's your primary <laughs> identity. Uh, your secondary identity is as a man or a woman. So you can still have sex, have children, and all that. But if you don't realize that, well, this was um, that your primary, your essence is spiritual or the one reality, which is beyond. Because if you're just a man or a woman, you're going to feel like, as uh, what's his name, Bird Dyes said, where I got most of this. You're going to be bisected. You're half of a whole. You'll, you'll wake up each morning thinking, wow, something's missing. I'm a woman. I need the man, the complementary, to become one. And so, you know, that's the problem with that. But uh, can I read this? Or, okay, this is amazing stuff. Um, okay, I guess I can read this. Quote, uh, Nikolai Berdyaev, the Russian philosopher, psychologist, man and woman not only seek union, but also wage a war against each other like deadly enemies. Due to the polarity of human nature, original sin is the division into two sexes and the fall of the androgen. Man as a complete being. Man is a sick, disharmonious creature because he is a sexual, that is, bisected being. Okay. Um, yeah, the key thing is uh, the word sex comes from the Latin secare, secare, from which we get sect, bisect, the C became an X over the centuries. So it just means to cut. Okay, so that means in the beginning, this is in the Bible and code, um, uh, well, I can say this, that Moses, when he wrote the Genesis, he accessed the Akashic records, but he didn't see this part clearly, so he contradicts himself in Genesis 1. Adam is male and female, the, the androgen complete. You know, male and female created them. But in the second chapter, uh, Adam stands for man alone, and he caused a deep sleep to fall over Adam. And then he took one of his ribs and created woman. That's not what happened, uh, according to the metaphysical teachers. Uh, there's this androgen, Adam is, is one being, a whole being, which is uh, male and female uh, infusion, but there's no male and female yet, there's no man and woman. And then there's the, the cicade, the cut, which creates sex or gender for, for the first time. So after the cut, you have man and then woman. And that's duality. The, you have duality. And then there's the need uh, to get back together, yeah. and that's sex and procreation, which and the point is you can never bring the two together anymore. So you can't solve a problem on the physical, uh, biological, uh, sexual level. You have, you know, the only way to be totally healed is to realize that your true self is this original androgen, which is beyond man, man and woman. So that's what I'm Non-dual sexuality. 
Okay, now you'll set you up. <laughs> well, then there's. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what was that? Oh. Non dual sexuality. Okay. I mean, yeah, well, what is If that we identify as male or female, we're being dualistic. Yeah. So really, okay. this androgen. I right, think is right. Well, this is what's happening. Everybody's coming into this. Like Elizabeth Farians, she's a, uh, a contemporary theologian. And she's speaking of uh, the age of woman in the church is coming on the scene. The age of woman or Christa is Christ and Christa. So we're going to redress the imbalance and bring, you know, the sacred, divine, and woman into the same level as, as man, you know, the Christ. So what's going to happen when we all actualize our, um, you know, we have to bring the masculine and feminine components, you know, being together and acknowledge them, get rid of sexual stereotyping and all this stuff. So... Um, What's going to happen when we actualize this higher self, higher nature, androgen nature, is she says we're, um, men and women will relate for the first time in history mm. in, in a totally new way, totally open. You're not going to hide anything anymore. You're totally revealed and open. There's no need to hide anything because, uh, well, you've uh, uh, transmuted your, your energy from your, the second uh, erotic uh, eros uh, center to the fourth um, chakra, the I am chakra, that's, you know, this is connecting the Bible, uh, you know, you are the temple of the I am that I am, that's the heart center. So people, once people have activated this, then you're complete, that's the key, as he says, you, your true self is complete. Uh, you don't need, need, crave a, a man or a woman to be complete. So when this happens, uh, then we get to theogamy, that's an advanced thing. Uh, well, I got that from Robert A. Heinlein, uh, you know the book, um, Stranger in a Strange Land, mm -hmm. incredible book. It blew our minds when we read it in the 60s. <laughs> thou art God, not you, but thou, mm. your deeper true self, and Water Brothers and everything. So he says what's coming on the scene is theogamy, what is that? The marriage of the gods. Mm. You know, it's all in the Bible, it does. Psalm 82, John 10, 34. I, God, say that you too are gods. And God, God says the word in Hebrew is Elohim. And it's right there in black and white. It's not really taught uh, in thousands of years, but now people are starting to see it in Christian teaching. teaching. So, uh, yeah, so, yeah, that's an amazing thing that no more games, you know, totally open and honest interactions between men and women. Can't wait for that. Yes. Work with that. Yeah. I have a question. What do you see as the role of technology in this? Um, do you see it as connecting people more or separating people more? Beautiful like, question. Yeah. yeah. Wow. There's always two sides to everything, but yeah. Um, well, I can give you the standard answers. You know, in general, most uh, intellectuals, professors say it's uh, you know it's damaging. You know. Uh, uh, thinking of well, an interview of uh, Anderson Cooper, he interviewed um, John Kabat-Zinn, I think, last oh. year about meditation, and brilliant interview. And he he went to the scientist at MIT, and he was put you know uh, electrodes mm -hmm. on his head, and anyway, it was very interesting. But then he said, people, you know, they're looking at their cell phone. You look in the cafeteria, and they're not talking to each other. They just keep looking at their cell phone and texting. And it's terrible what's going on. So there is that side of it. Um, wow. Again, the whole thing is um, uh, we're learning control. Um, yeah, it's like what Christ says, seek ye first the one reality and all these things will take care of themselves. So if you're, if you're totally committed to transforming yourself, I think technology is no problem. It's, mm -hmm. just, it's just like a tool. You know, like, uh, I don't know, like it starts out with what, rubbers, you know, when you... Um, what's a tool? Um, a hat, an umbrella, you know, that's all it is, a tool, and it's a valuable tool, it has all the information in the world, you know, you know how the evolution of the computer was in the beginning, there was like uh, ten rooms full of these tremendous computers, uh, and now we have this little cell phone which contains everything, it's incredible. So if it's used properly, I think, if you have your priorities straight, that's the whole thing. Most people don't, and that's the problem. They're not looking for you know, truth and reality and who, I, who am I and so once that shifts, see my feeling is once this stuff is taught in all the universities and schools in the world, that's the beginning of the end when we, we actually lift the whole planet up into this unitive consciousness 
and we end wars and killing and greed and the whole mess. So, but it's not going to happen unless we we all in our individual spheres of influence start transforming, and those around us will transform. Teachers, doctors, lawyers, uh, you know, yoga teachers, uh, whatever it is, we have to. Wherever we're planted, we should just start to, uh, you know, uh, really uh, double down and, and get into the unity and. Uh, Control our thoughts and start healing people, healing the planet. And this, you know, this is this happened like with Bosnia. I remember with Marion Williams, and she used to text everybody, "We're going to pray for Bosnia on at 12 o'clock noon on this day." Mm -hmm. And all these people prayed. They just directed their thoughts, and within two days, the whole thing was cleared up. So I would say it's true. You know, we, we really have to. Uh, we can clean up uh, the, the planet Earth and the mass and all the all, all the nations just by uh, activating, controlling our thoughts, our thought life. I think so. As Bernie Sanders would say, uh -huh. that's true. <laughs> <laughs> we love Bernie. Well, coincidentally, driving over here, I was listening to a John Kabat-Zinn CD, which I found <coughs> quite fortunately because I was housekeeping my car and it was under the carpet. And he talks about, and I was very grateful that you suggested that when the first thing we do when we wake up is begin the vigilance of the cleaning up mm -hmm. by thinking of the point and the one. And think of the whole, not just of yourself. Whole, well, that's the whole thing. All seven billion souls, people on the planet, yes. Well, because what he was saying was so interesting, and it's really what you're saying exactly, that there's an ethical basis to this meditating on the one. And I so get it, because the first thing I think of when I get up is, I'm already meditating, but here's my meditation. This is me, this is what I need that I don't have, this is what I have that I don't need, and this is what I need to get. Now, nations wake up like that, and then they declare war on other nations to get what they need. So, so important, well, the point you're talking yeah. about. And what he was talking about is exactly this, there's an ethical basis here, it's not just me, me, me. I am so locked into the me and the key is here. You I needed the key. You said it better than I could have ever said it. Well, you said it and I got it. So thank you. <laughs> I really needed that. But I think the secret is the circle. You know, the circle. It's a circle. And, and everybody's in there and you wake up in the morning and, and there it is, you draw the circle and then you step into the <laughs> circle like that and you stay in it the whole day. And you know Vertically. Vertically. Yeah. Um, Vertically. Yeah, and when you important. turn your head. Oh, vertically, yes. Yeah, yes. vertically. And, you know, it, it'll take a little practice because it's lot. not going to have a lot of practice. <laughs> lot. We have the old habitual program we have to, you know, reprogram everything. So, but you can do it. We can do it, right? Okay, we have free will seconds. or we don't have free will. You said uh, earlier that we were born into separateness. Yeah, go ahead. Now, I mean, do you, is, do you think that we were actually born into separateness or we were part of the whole and then we were t taught mm. through ego and through... Well, that's beautiful. You know, which... Yeah. Weren't that's... we born into wholeness? Right, And then we good. separated? Yeah, well, to, to, make, to simplify, make it short, uh, we teach that there's nothing but this one yeah. consciousness we call the absolute I and it's uh, universal, but to become consciousness, it has to fuse with the opposite. The universal must fuse with the individual. That's, you know, that's the, the human body, okay? And every baby, as Alan Watts says, I appear in every baby born. You know? So it's the same I, or one consciousness that, ah, that wakes up in every baby born. And, um, yeah, so, well, you, you, what happens is, what happens everywhere, there's this one, three conditions, there's one undifferentiated consciousness, okay, and then it has to separate into subject-object, that you get your separate ego and everything, but the goal of life is to get back to the unity with full consciousness. So, um, so in other words, if you read Freud's Civilization and His Discontents, uh, the baby in the very beginning experiences what's called the oceanic feeling. Uh, it's one with the mother's face, the crib, the toys in the crib, and, and everything. It, as Hegel says, it doesn't acknowledge the separation of itself and what it sees and feels. Um, 
It doesn't, it doesn't say the word I yet. When it reaches two or three years mm -hmm. old, it begins, as soon as it says I, it splits. Right. What Hegel says in the beginning, nature is totally within the soul, you know, the baby's soul, the stars, the galaxies. I just had a flash when I was three years old. I was in my crib, mother, you know, outside the house. What is it called? It's not a crib. Right passing it. No, right. it's a carriage, a carriage. Okay. And I saw the moon, I, and I, I try to grab the moon. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, there's no... Uh, you are the universe, the beginning. You're one with everything, and then as soon as you, you know, say the word "I," you, everything that was inside gets projected outside over against you. It becomes the world. That's the you know self, other, subject, object split, and that's you go through life with the separation and all the problems of the separate ego, and then the goal is to overcome the separation. I mean, Hegel and Schelling, the ATM calls it the the unity of subject object. You know, as Alan Watts says, "I am also a you." Because yeah, when you look at me, you're saying, hey, you, so I'm an I and a you at once, I'm subject object. So that's the goal, that's, that's what they call absolute knowledge, you know, the unity of uh, consciousness and being, truth, the object. Um, and that, that's an important word, the object. In German, it's Gegenstand, you know, as Alan Watts says, objects are objectionable. <laughs> so you've got to get rid of them. Gegenstand is an object, it means that which stands Gagan over against you, restricts you, eliminate, uh, limits you, and denies who you are. It's like the not I, you know, fictive is the I and the not I. The goal, that's an illusion though, so you have to overcome that and move to the higher self, which is the one absolute reality. You know, as the New Age says, we are God, you know, gods and goddesses. But again, there's a wrong way to interpret that and a right one. So why do you use the Jedi, um, you know, were you influenced by Joseph Campbell and... His work with George Lucas and Star Wars? That's a good question. The Hero with a Thousand yes. Faces, right? Yeah, I read that. Uh, it's complicated. Simply put, I had like four titles for this book. And uh, uh, in the beginning it was called Manual for the Future, something like that, and The Solutions of the World's Problems. Um, but one of my friends said, well, Are you crazy? The fourth title is, is it, The Jedi Handbook, you know? Are you sure? <laughs> And um, so eventually I, I settled on that title and I dropped the other ones. And uh, I like it because uh, the main concepts dovetail perfectly with all of philosophy and all of science, you know. So the force and all of non-duality. There's only one reality. It has two sides. The two sides are in unity, light side, dark side. And a Jedi, our true self, is nothing but the force actualized and individualized. And that's what we are. You know, um, again, it's in a humble, non-egoic, you know, uh, the danger, of course, is uh, with the New Age is you could inflate your ego to infinity and everybody should worship me. There's Adi Da in the Midwest, and he goes into that. And, you know, all the people through the ages, what's his name? Jim Jones. And yeah. You can go off on the deep end. you got to realize the, the solution to all this, the mistake, is to realize there's only one reality. Uh, it has two sides, consciousness and matter, and you're just using the one reality's consciousness and matter. And that, so it's not yours. You can't glorify yourself or take credit for it. It's, it's this, there is this eternal one, and every baby born puts on the consciousness of the one and the body of the one. So there's no boasting or pride or ego or danger of saying, I'm God and you're not or anything. That's all you got to realize. That It's a gift. The whole thing's a gift. And... Uh, you're just using God or the forces, consciousness and body, and you should be totally grateful. Gratitude, humility is, you know, um, Islam means surrender. You, uh, you. That's what they all say. You have to not deny yourself to, to win yourself, lose yourself and win your false self, your separate self, and win your true self, um, the I am self, and uh, that's a way to express it. I'll give you this also, this came up. Um, yeah, the, it, it has to do with the, the I am God in a teaching, very powerful. Um, you know, Mayor Baba in his God Speaks, he has, his two major books are God Speaks, you know, he, he says he's God. He realized well, the I am God state, the goal of creation life is to realize the I am God state, right? 
Um, the secret is that uh, the I in I am God is not you. <laughs> That's what you have to realize. It's not your separate personality, egoic self, you know, with your identity. I have these parents. I, I live in this state. I have this accomplishment. Accomplishments, here's my resume, look at that. That's not the I and I am God. The I is God, or the I am speaking. And if you get that straight, that's, that'll help you. So yeah, I tell my students, you know, it can damage you if you, if you think it's, we call it your PI. There's your PI, you're a particular individual, and there's the UI, which is the universal individual. That means uh, you have a self which, which uh, contains all selves within itself. That's, you know, the absolute I of the one consciousness. So if you get that straight, it could really benefit you because the, the, the mistake is to separate yourself from God, which all the religions do. God is here and I'm here. And uh, that, believe it or not, keeps you in what's called sin, which is nothing but separation. As Nietzsche says, really in the Antichrist or the Antichristian and other teachers. So the truth is, you know, nobody understands it. It's in, it's in Jesus said, may they be echad. Echad is one, one with God, even as... We are one, I and them, and uh, you and us. So every, but we're all at one with God right now. And, um, you know, the whole thing, 2 Peter 1, 4, we share the divine nature, therefore we are divine, and all that stuff. But the church is afraid to teach that for certain reasons. But, um, yeah. So the mistake is to say, I'm not God. So you can start out with that. You know, you know, and beginners, of course, can benefit. I, I teach that. In the beginning, you take the child. You don't teach the child that they're God. You know, you get them to become aware of this, this God, uh, infinity, this supreme perfect being. As they grow up, though, then you can, at some point, you can teach them about the I am God teaching, which is the unity. See, it's the unity of you and God in such a way that you, you know, you, you let God take you over, so to speak, you know. There's two kinds of possession, you know, in religion. religion. Uh, demonic possession, demon possession, and God possession. So and this is the one you want, God possession, you know, God intoxication. So, um, yeah, you step out of the way and uh, become the temple of God, if you like. Or uh, I think in Isaiah, he says, I will dwell in you and walk in you and talk in you and drive a car in you and eat uh, cornflakes in you and take orange juice out of the refrigerator, in you. This is also in Islam, people don't know this. Um, this is the hadith, the word of Muhammad himself. He says, uh, my servant who loves me, I will come and become the ear with which she hears, the eye with which she sees, the hand with which she grasps, and the foot with which she walks. I, Allah, Allah means God in Arabic. I will become one with you completely. And it's right there. And that's the Sufi tradition. The Sufis know this. Yeah. So, you know, it's all it's incredible. So would another word for God in the way you're using it be consciousness? Yeah, that's what's universal, happening. Uh, the universal I would be the way I am a participant in consciousness or a custodian of or a user of consciousness. Would that be a correct? Oh, you said five different things. Cognate huh? here, I'm trying, because like the word God could be very Yeah, God tricky. is really a stumbling block. Uh, Meister Eckhart, in the was it, 15th century, 1400s, he says God is a major problem in realizing one's unity with God. As soon as you say God, yeah. you're positing this infinite being over against you, and then it's impossible to unify with God. Becomes he said that in a sermon. Oh, yeah. yeah. That was a sermon that he almost got burned to death for. Right, he got in trouble. He said, if you, if you even say that you believe in God, you're, you're wrong. You oh, that believe. I didn't know. Oh, yeah. You can't sermon, believe in God? The sermon, yes. He said, oh. Oh, my God. Oh, you mean such Meister a Eckhart. radical. Oh, yeah. Meister Eckhart said that. He was such a radical. Because you're putting yourself here and God over there. Yeah. Right. That's, that's the, right, I see what you mean. As reading. an object. I mean, I can't believe they didn't. I mean, he was a bishop, so they couldn't burn him at the stake, but... Wow. Sermon on poverty. Huh? Yeah. You said, you, well, we read that. Yeah. Yeah? We read it. It's great. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah, he has a lot of... Blakeney has a great, all of his works in one volume, I think. But, um, yeah, so let's go back to your question. So could we say, I am consciousness? Consciousness is what gives... Yeah, you can say that, by the way. What do you mean by consciousness? you got to connect consciousness with, with God or the one absolute reality. 
Because if you, if you tell a, a worldly secular psychologist, you know, he'll say, I'm, I'm consciousness, it'll mean something totally different. Right? But what else is there? I mean... Okay, that's a good question. That's, no, the, that's, that's why I'm yeah. wanting to find a synonym or cognate I see what for you're that about. word when you're teaching in this way. So mm. that I can have a more usable, operational... Yeah, I understand. traction with the whole phenomenon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? <laughs> well, <laughs> okay. Right there. Right there. You, know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, so consciousness, yeah. consciousness is fine, or awareness, yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, it, it, you know, it's all encoded in the Bible. What do you, what do you think I am that I am means? A year, a share, a year. It's, you know, the I am that I am. Now you break that up, that connects with Descartes, I think, therefore, I am, which is the beginning of, of the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And you could look at that, what is that? I stands for consciousness, mm -hmm. am stands for being. So it's, uh, I am is the unity, this is what God is, the inseparability, our true self, inseparability of consciousness and being. They're one. Mm -hmm. So if you're conscious, you are absolute being. You have indestructible, indissoluble, eternal being. You know, you're divine. That's, mm -hmm. that's the key behind let us create man in our own image. Mm -hmm. And this also connects to the, the Hindu expression of the Upanishads, uh, Satchitananda. You know, Sat is uh, being, Chit is uh, consciousness. And when you put them together, you get infinite bliss, ananda, you know, bliss. So the way to be happy is to realize that consciousness and being are one, you know. It's the same thing. Everything <coughs> comes together in the end. So we're starting to wake up globally, you know, worldwide, and uh, it's incredible. To be alive now is amazing. Because all this stuff is coming out. It wasn't available in earlier epochs, you know. We now have the internet. <laughs> It's all there, you know, but you gotta, you know, watch out. Don't get, you know, uh, pulled into it and you lose yourself in cyberspace. That could be good. Now, who am I? I'm not, <laughs> you know, I'm losing my mind, you know, that was something. Uh, we now have the mind of Christ, so you have to lose your lower mind and gain God's mind and all that stuff. But, um, yeah, I love that Satchit and Ananda. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I answered your question, but consciousness is great. I would say use it, but you have to understand what it means, that's the key, that it's it's the ultimate, it's reality. It's and awareness. Yes. Yeah, I like awareness I better. I like awareness it's better. That's my favorite word, it's something about that word. Consciousness is too academic, technical. Well, you know, I think consciousness is also a subject-object type that's of thing, mm. versus awareness is simply... Beautiful, that's yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. like uh, Husserl and Brentano, his teacher, said, consciousness is always consciousness of. Right. Say of an object, a thing. So it means separation. That's why Hegel mm. likes Zelps the Wusstsein, self consciousness. Uh, I can't do this now, but maybe I will. The, the true meaning of the Trinity, you have to go to German, you know, uh, Sein, you know, Seinfeld. Sein is being. So in the beginning, there's the one being, but he doesn't know who he is. He, has to, he or she has to wake up. So immediately it produces a second. Well, he transforms himself or herself into Bewusstsein, that's conscious being. So you have the same being who is now, you can't get this in English because you have consciousness. In German you got Sein, Sein, Sein. You know, Sein, the one being, and then he wakes up as Bewusstsein, conscious, that's man, woman, human being. The final state is Selbstbewusstsein. The being is now conscious of itself, I know who I am. So in the second state as man, you're conscious of the world or the other and all the problems that involves, you know, self or the split separation. But when you finally wake up, you are the being aware of itself. I said you are God to wake up. That's what David, well, it's not David, it's Asa who wrote that song. Mm -hmm. But I like consciousness. Oh, awareness, I'm sorry, that's erase that. Awareness, people, mm -hmm. for whoever listening to this. That's where it's at, awareness. Thank you, Walt. Awareness. Awake, you know, awaken, be mm -hmm. awake and aware. I like the mm -hmm. combination, awake and aware. Yeah. <coughs> so you finished with sex, the argument, <laughs> man, and relations? Okay, that's fine. <laughs>
and the uh, We Are Gods. What else is there? Let's see. Schools, uh, think that was enough. health, doctors, psychiatrists, doctors. Uh, you, told, you said a lot of things I really had to... Oh, digest? To, yes. It was, okay. I don't think I can hear anymore. I'm sorry. Yeah, well, maybe uh, you should... What are they? You know, this is a wrap? What do they do? Yeah. yeah. Well, thanks for waking us up. Thank well, you know, I'm scared. I love your free associative, you know, kind of thing. I can thank, see that. You yeah, know, well, thank you. It's, you know, all the stuff is there. Style. Yeah, you know? and it's, I just it's pick out this, yeah. oh, that connects to that, and this yeah. connects to that. And if I think it's important or ben benefit somebody, I, I, I say it, but there's a lot of stuff which I don't say. Yeah. Uh, you have to, you know, it takes years to, to perfect this. Oh, I, should, I shouldn't say that, but it's, yeah, a lot of people I know, they just talk and talk and talk. And, uh, you know. It's all in the editing. The editing, it's right. The editing. Everything happens in the editing room. You know? <laughs> and then, of course, James Bond is coming out tomorrow. <laughs> so it's the new Jedi movie, the new Star Wars. Oh, right. Uh, yeah, they're yeah. selling tickets now. I passed by in the Jitney, the, uh, you know, the uh, United so. Artists Theater, and it says, Star Wars yeah. tickets on sale. But you know that Joseph Campbell talked a lot with George Lucas about... He did. I mean, he influenced George Lucas's Yoda, who's really the Buddha. Okay. And Campbell, you know, the two of them would walk together, Campbell and... Really? Yeah. They were like this, right? Yeah, they were one. <laughs> and they were, there was Bill uh, Moyers. Moyers. And, uh, and Bill Moyers interviewed Campbell. Campbell. And he also interviewed Lucas. I have a, yes. a quote in my supplement to this yeah. book with him, explaining what you know, Star Wars is all about. You know, the kids were losing you know, awareness of God. So yeah. they put the force in there to yeah. try to awaken for the young yeah. kids, awaken God back into their consciousness. Yeah. And, and it's taken off. There are Jedi yeah. churches all over the planet. I'm an ordained Jedi. Really? Um, you are? Yeah, well, I got it on the internet. But. Oh, wow. <laughs> but I have a friend who's just, she's a second generation Jedi. Really? Uh, I hear there are more Jedis in England than Episcopalians. That's <laughs> 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 true, it's amazing. You know, they sign out the census, what are you, I'm a Jedi, and, uh, Catholic or Anglican Church. But it's amazing, it's just incredible. Yes, if you're a Jewish Jedi, you could be a Jew dot. Yeah. <laughs> a Jewish a Jew dot. A Jew dot. Could the force be with you? Yes. Well, it's and interesting that a whole generation of kids have grown up with Star Wars. And you wonder if they you know, get it in that way, mm. in terms of the force. And yeah, a lot of them do. They have, yeah. like, go Your look students. at... Yeah, some of them, but there's the, what is it, Texas, Beaumont or something? That's the center, the center of the largest Jedi church in America. What is it called? The, um, the Temple of the Jedi Order. And they're really serious, you know, about uh, the rules and the principles. And, uh, you know, you're a Padawan, you could be a first level uh, one master, man. level two. And, uh, <laughs> It's, it's, they're serious, you know, they have weddings uh, among Jedi. If the Scientologists could be a church, <laughs> then the Jedi definitely oh. True, true. I'm going to come through and uh, put the tea out. Thank you. Ah, great idea. I could use so I'll try. Would you like? Yes, I would. You could pay Eve. Eve is a uh, church. You pay master? Yes.